Hi there, my name's Vince from MyMakeVince.com and in this video today is going to be another fix it video. Another video where I'm trying to fix something that I've bought 40 off eBay. Now in here we should have two Game Gears because I had a sneaky look earlier and I've seen them. So uh, I've really tried to fix Game Gears on my channel. Okay, quite a lot of corrosion there, missing the back things, springs broken there. Right, looks a bit of a sorry state that one. Uh, I've tried fixing a couple of game gears with very little success. First one had all weird vertical lines on the screen, changed all the capacitors, absolutely made no difference at all, and uh, I couldn't get it working. Second one had low sound and also pixels on the screen, dead pixels or bright pixels on the screen. And uh, with that one, changed all the capacitors. The uh, sound started to work, which was good, but the pixels still remained on the screen. So uh, that wasn't very successful either. So I'm hoping maybe this time I might have more luck. But the problem is, corrosion again, the problem is that this particular one is from a business seller. A business seller who sells a lot of gaming stuff. So chances are he, probably, he or she probably already knows their stuff. In which case then, the odds of me, with very little knowledge, getting them working is going to be pretty slim. Now, I've already had two of them apart before, so I do know my way around it. And I've done a bit of reading up about the different faults. So uh, hopefully I will have a little bit more knowledge on it this time. But saying that, you know, I'm still new to it and I've only taken two of them apart before. So uh, if these are different faults than the last ones, which I hope they are because those ones were unfixable, then uh, again, I'm going to be new to this. You can see this is what I paid. So it was off eBay. I paid £24.99 for the two items and then £2.95 for the actual postage. So you're looking just under £28 pounds, and it just says two Sega Game Gear consoles, 40 parts, spares and repairs not working. And it just uh, it's got a few pictures and it just says average condition. One has corrosion in battery compartment. One of them powers on, but LED flashes red and has black screen. Will be quickly dispatched, blah, blah, blah. So, okay, this is the first time I've bought one of these where it didn't mention about bad capacitors because everybody instantly thinks it's just 40 capacitors when it comes to these things here. But on my last two, that wasn't the case. So uh, I'm looking forward to getting stuck into these ones and seeing maybe between two of them if I can get one working one. Annoying thing about the Game Gears is the screen is kind of built into the motherboard, it's like soldered straight onto the motherboard, so you would have to be very good to be able to change that screen out. But still, we'll have a, we'll have a look and see, uh, see what the issue is with them. Right, okay, just notice that this has a strap on it and it says Japan on it, so this probably is a, a little Game Gear strap to, when you're, when you're playing it, have it around your wrist, so if you ever dropped it, it can just fall like that. Right, okay, so uh, I'm going to try this one first because the battery terminals on this look okay. That one is quite corroded there, but uh, it looks it looks all right. Let's give it a quick scrape. I'll have to give that a proper clean up though. Okay, really, I should have put the batteries in first just in case that's going to fix it. Just using rechargeable, rechargeable batteries here because this thing eats up the double A's. Right, let's get a game. And let's see what's happening. Okay. There's doing something on the screen there. If you have a look. Oh, the light's on now, but it's flashing red. Now it's gone off. I wonder, is it a bad connection there? Because when I wiggle that battery... No, it's not going off now. Right, okay. Uh, right, well, that's uh, that's one thing. So that's not, that's not powering up at all. Let's uh, see what the other one does. Flashing red light, I don't know, could that be could that be a power issue? Right, this one's really corroded on the terminals. I'd be surprised if this one makes a contact. And we've got a missing spring here. Right, okay. It would be nice if it just needed new terminals. That one's not gonna make. Let's try to, well first of all, this is what they would have tested. 
yeah, so there's no power there at all because this thing here, let me just try to bend it out just to try and get a bit of contact on it. That might make a contact, let's see. Oh yeah, here we go. Did it come on? I can definitely see a line across the screen. Right, so obviously it's not just it's not just a bad connection. So that needs its battery sorting out and whatever else is wrong with it. Right, okay, well, uh, interesting ones. Which one shall I look at first? Uh, they're both going to really be as bad as each other, aren't they? Uh, <laughs> I don't know which one to try first. I think this one here is going to need more work because of all the corrosion on the terminal. So I think I'm going to start with this one here and see uh, see what happens. So I'm going to take it all apart. And then see if we can see anything obvious. Now I have got a broken up game gear that I can use for parts. So this one here is the one with the uh, broken screen and it's all missing its capacitors now as well because I put them in to another game gear that I was trying to that I was trying to fix up. So I'm just gonna fast forward through the dismantling. placed the uh, order for these two I did actually get some battery covers as well because you can buy these for uh, at the time were well, 199 so basically it was just a pound per cover so if I do get them working I can get nice new battery covers and they fit absolutely perfectly so they look like they're good quality I was expecting for a pound for them to look really bad but they actually look good they even labeled up left and right so uh, if I do get them working, I can put the covers on the back to make them look better. Right, okay, looks uh, looks clean on the inside, first impressions. Oh, this is a different board. So this is a uh, this is a version uh, a model one because the last two that I took apart were. Model 2s because they just had the one chip here and one extra capacitor. So this should be one for 11 capacitors. 1, 2, 3, 4, sorry, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Yeah. Right, okay. Uh, actually, looking at them, some of them do look. If you were to look at the bottom of the capacitor there, it does look. Uh, It looks kind of furred up a bit. Doesn't look clean, does it? Compared to, for example, these ones here. If you look at those pads, they're nice. Oh, this one doesn't. Right, so what I'm going to do is... I think this is the one that's not powering up properly. So I think I'm going to put the back off... Uh, I'm going to put the power board from my uh, this one here into here just to see if it makes a difference. Everything looks slightly different. The boards being hit between here look different. So this is the sound board here. Yeah, some of the components are different. Hopefully the capacitors and everything is just a straight swap. Right, okay. So I've changed the capacitors over in this sound board here because when I was working on this one up here, I basically changed all the capacitors. So uh, I'm going to try, I'm just going to try a straight swap on a power board just to see if that makes a difference. Then I can start looking into it deeper. Right, let's see if that power board's made any difference.
No. All right. What have I? Uh, what have I done wrong? Let me just put one of the screws in. I'm sure that wouldn't make a difference, but. Uh, Maybe it needs to be earthed, I don't know. Weird, why is that not working at all now? power board worked in the other one, it was just a screen that was faulty. Oh, when did it come on there? Flashing red, so it doesn't look like it's the power board. Oh, I can hear the music. Can you hear that? Really quiet. Right. Okay, well, quiet is normally the uh, sign of a bad, uh, bad capacitors in the soundboard. But, uh... Just worried. I don't want to change all the capacitors for it to be a fault on the uh, fault on the screen as well. But some of those capacitors definitely look dodgy. And I have got a spare. I have actually got a pack. You see, because uh, you can buy these. Obviously, you can just replace the capacitors. You can get them anywhere. But you, to make it easy for yourself, you can get a pack of twenty to. Uh, capacitors that somebody's already sorted the correct ones for the Sega Game Gear. They cost me, I think it was £6.80 and that was delivered. So I have got the capacitors to change it and it doesn't matter whether it's a Model 1 or Model 2 or I think there's a Model 3 as well that's going to be the same capacitors. Uh, yeah, I'm wondering whether... I'm wondering if I should take apart the other one at the same time and uh, see if I can mix, mix and match stuff. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take apart this one as well because this one's got faults all over the, the the battery compartment. So if I could, for example, swap the back with this one, just to see, you know, to see if we can get one working, one between the two, then I can worry about the faulty one. Right. So this one looks like quite an early model because the date here is 1991. And it is the first month, so it's January 1991. If you want to see the difference between the two boards, you see, this one here is the Model 2, and the one at the bottom is the Model 1. You see the difference? I'm not sure if one's supposed to be better than the other. Now, because of all the corrosion on the battery terminals here, I'm expecting to find a real mess on the inside. You see, this one is quite clean. But I've got a feeling this one's going to be very bad. Right, so that's the back. Looks okay. This is the front here. But again, first impressions, it doesn't look awful. But I can definitely see staining around the bottom of all the pads of the capacitors. Right, okay, so nice and simple. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to use the back of this one in this one and then 
that will eliminate, for example, the uh, bad terminals on the battery, and also the uh, well, it won't eliminate the sound card, but it will also do the uh, the power board as well. This sound card here is probably faulty because the sound on it was so low. Right, let's see what this one does now. Let's put the game in and power it on. Oh, I can see something. I've seen Sega there for a second. And I can hear just about. Right. There you go, something there. It's so hard to see, but you can just. There we go, look. Excellent. Right, I'm going to, because this screen's always split into three anyway, I'm going to, this is a bad game to check. Because with this game, uh, you know, that's not going to show me if it's split into three or not. So let me check Wonder Boy. Because then if it was just a, a bad screen, a bad sound, that could well be capacitors. And this Wonder Boy doesn't always work. No, I can't hear anything on this one. No, it's not doing anything. Maybe maybe that was just the last bit of life it had in it on columns. Let's try columns again. Well, no, there's nothing now, but I wasn't dreaming. I've definitely seen columns working on it. So I think with this one here, uh, I think I'm going to go for the capacitor change and see if it, see if it fixes this one. I, I might be lucky. I'm going to keep the good back with this one here. And uh, we can worry about because I don't want to spend ages sorting out the battery terminals here if there's something, if the screen or something's gone on this one. So we're going to keep the good back. I'm just wondering now, the front, the buttons and everything are really badly damaged on it. So I'm wondering whether I should use the front from this one here. Uh, trying to see which is better. You know, the screens are scratched up about the same amount. But the buttons are definitely better on this. So I think what I'll do is I'll uh, change the capacitors out in this one using my kit. And then I will, uh, so I'll be putting all the capacitors into here. And then I think I'm just going to take the buttons out of my donor game gear. So that's what I'm going to be doing. All right, so let's put that one over there for the time being. And that one. So we need to, thinking about the sound, uh, power board. I think I'm going to leave the power board. I might not need to change the capacitors on that. And it looks like I'll probably have to do the sound board here as well. So first things first, I think I'm going to swap, swap the buttons over. It's got water damage everywhere. Look. Yeah, look at my finger. Uh, do you know what? That might not be water damage. That's probably... Oh, it's everywhere. Uh, yeah, and you can see here, you see this corrosion. Here and here. Oh, that's not so good. Right, okay. I think I'm going to have to give this one a real good clean. Yeah, see, when those capacitors leak, that stuff gets everywhere. It's really corrosive. You can see it all around here, look. It's all sticky. Well, I'm going to have to get some IPA cleaner and give this a real good clean absolutely everywhere. here at the screen can you see it looks like can you see it looks like there's a uh, liquid damage there and up the top a bit as well with these.
these is the capacitors leak and then all that fluid leaks out everywhere and it's really corrosive and basically over the years it just eats into everything, eats into the circuit board and just corrodes absolutely everything. What does that mean if the screen's broken? Look, can you see? I presume there's no way of drawing that out. Hmm. Yeah, do you know what? I'm really not hopeful about this one now. After seeing the damage everywhere, I'm thinking there might be more more things wrong with it than just the capacitors. So uh, yeah, I'm not uh, not feeling too confident, but uh, I'm going to plug it back in. See what happens. I want to see what happens with the screen now with this liquid in it. I'll put some tissue behind it so it doesn't short. So right now there's no power. Let's see if we've got any voltage here. No, right, so maybe it's that connector at the back. That's better. Right, okay, it's reading voltage now. So uh, let's put it back together again. See if we have anything. Right, maybe it's my uh, rechargeable batteries. How oh, weird. So basically, by me cleaning it, there's no, uh, there's no power here at all now. Coincidence. I mean, this was the one with the corro. This was the one with the corroded terminals. So uh, when I put the new back on it with the new batteries and stuff, I suppose this was the first time any sort of electricity's flowed through it in a long time. But it's it's strange. You would expect it to do. Uh, you know, you'd expect it to to come on. I know the power board's okay because that's the one that came out of this one up here, the donor one. Right, okay. No point in doing that over and over again. What's going on here? Because there's no power here now. Uh, right, I am going to use my donor board. Definitely reading voltage here. Okay, let's try it now. 
battery terminals on the other one as well. Right, okay. Okay, red lights on. Excellent, I can see Sega. Yeah, I can definitely see it. Actually, from this angle, you can see it pretty well. Look at that. Look at that. Let's put the volume up. And all the screens work in there, isn't it? So what I'm going to have to do is, obviously it's, it's rubbish because I can't see it, but that a dim screen is uh, a sign of a capacitor issue. So it looks like I might be able to Frankenstein all these together to be able to get a working one. But there's definitely some sort of lines going up and down the screen there, but it's not too bad. Well, that's what I'm going to do. I'm definitely now going to change the capacitors here. Happy with that. Right, OK. OK, so I'm just going to take the buttons out of the donor one and then I'm going to put it into the one where I'm going to change the capacitors on. Because the uh, buttons on this look like they've been slid all over concrete. Clean up now, and also I'm just going to wash my hands before I turn it on because they're covered in flux. Right, here we go. The moment of truth. So I'm going to try this game just because this is the one we've been using, then I'll try another one. Here we go now. Excellent. Right, okay, I've got black lines on it though. Right, so I couldn't see those black lines before. But it's certainly nice and bright now. But those <laughs> those black lines are pretty bad. Yeah. Right, okay. Uh, mm, that's a bit of a shame. Let me try a different game. Now, why doesn't it like this game? Oh, here we go. At least the black lines perfectly border Sega. I don't know if you can see them in the thing there. There you go, you can see them now. Pretty bad. Uh, yeah, I mean, colours are great and stuff, brightness is great, sound is great, but you know what? Those black lines are actually worse than the pixels on the other one, because they really are distracting. With the pixels on my other Game Gear, you can kind of ignore it, but uh, on this one you can't. Right, I'm going to have to find out what causes the horizontal black lines, because this is a new problem that I haven't, uh, I haven't come across yet. So, but there was definitely a lot of people talking about it. I think this is more to do with the ribbon cable. So this one might be fixable, possibly. I'm not saying I'll be able to fix it, but... Uh... Right, okay, let's, uh, let's do a bit of reading up. I think because the video is going to go on for so long, I'm going to make this into a two-parter. So I'll continue fixing this one now, and then the other one over there will be a second video. Right, let me do a bit of reading up and find out what these three black lines are. 
Right, okay, so I've been doing some research into it, and uh, basically, yeah, unfortunately, it's an LCD problem again. So I've been reading up, and basically, it seems like there's, I don't know if you mentioned, uh, if I mentioned earlier about the three chips at the bottom. So that looks like it was the problem with the last one I had, because it was vertical lines, but with horizontal lines, it looks like the chip on the uh, on the side. So when you look at the back of it on the right hand side, so I presume it must be over this side. And again, a way people are sort of temporarily fixing it is by applying heat, but it's only a short term fix. So they're like heating it up and then the lines will disappear, but then they come back again. It didn't say how long it is before they come back, but it's definitely only a temporary fix. I'm a bit worried to do that because again, right now it is usable. It's not great. And I would prefer to play the one that was pixelated rather than this. But at least it is still usable. So uh, what I think is, I think what I'm going to do is take it apart and I'm just going to apply a bit of pressure to that chip. Or I'm just going to double check that it isn't anything to do with the actual, uh, with the actual ribbon cable or one of the solder joints. Because if it is that, then obviously that would be fixable. But if it's to do with the actual chip, again, it's not going to be fixable because it means it needs a new LCD. So it was slightly disappointing, but still, you know, that's what uh, that's what it is. So uh, I'm going to take it apart now. I'm not going to bother filming it. Next time you see this now, it will be taken apart. And then I will actually have the game running and I'm just going to apply different amounts of pressure to the chip just to see if these lines disappear. Right, okay, so I've got it all dismantled now. So let's turn it on and see if we can... Uh play around with this chip at the side here so it seems like this is the problem here sorry I haven't put the batteries in hold on I left two out to take the screws out one second right okay right, I've got that there so nothing's going to short hopefully right let's have a look now Right, okay. Oh, there's more lines now. Look, we've got four now. Right, there was only three before, so we've got one extra one. Just putting a bit of pressure on each of them. So it looks like it's getting, it's definitely getting worse. Because before, I don't think there was that one along here. Because I remember it was either side of the Sega sign. And then that one there. Or possibly, I don't know, there's definitely one extra one now. There you go. Oh, look, there. It's gone. Right, let's... Uh, so it's when I put pressure on there, they go. That's interesting. Right, okay, but it was pressure on the chip. See, one's back now down the bottom. It was pressure on the chip and not on the uh, not on the ribbon cable. Yes, yeah, when you put pressure there. Right, okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, whatever it is, it's not going to be a long-term fix, is it? There you go, one's back already. I'm wondering, though, the screen fits into this little surround here. So if I was to put an extra little, maybe, you know, another layer of tape or something here to hold this down, to put pressure on it, I wonder would it last and how long would it last for? I mean, there's one back there now, but... Uh, See, what other people do is heat it up. And yes, I could heat it up. My worry about that is that I think it's going to fail really quick. While if I was to put pressure on it, maybe it would last a little bit longer. I don't know. I think I'm going to go with the pressure. Because they're completely gone now. It's an interesting one. Right, let me get some... Uh, just thinking what to use, because I have to actually use quite a lot of pressure to get rid of that. Right, so it definitely looks like they're staying away at the moment. So uh, I think I'm going to use this tape here. It's 3M tape, and basically it's just double-sided tape. 
But what I'm going to do is I'm not going to take this side of it off because uh, I actually want to be able to get to the screen again. So I think I'm just going to put some layers on it here, build it up and just see what happens. might be too much I just want to see if that's going to be viewed when I uh, put it back in right, I'm going to turn this off for the time being would be nice if that was a, a fix that would last a while definitely know it's not going to last a long time just see what that looks like that's going to be fine I don't know if that's enough though. Right, I've got a bit of dirt in there that I need to remove. I'm also going to put a bit on here as well. Because with the tape it's going to sort of compress down after a while anyway. Right, I'm going to test it one more time before putting it back together. I'm just going to do it like this so I don't have to put any insulation on it. Excellent, look at that, no lines at all. Right, okay, I'm going to turn that off, put it back together, and then we'll give it a good test. Hey, you know, I'm really happy with those uh, battery connectors at the back there because they're at the covers for a pound each. They're really good quality. Right, okay, uh, here we go. So let's turn some lights off because it's going to be much easier for you to see. Oh, there was a black line there for a minute, but it's not right now. Right, let's turn the lights off. Oh, look at that, no lines. A working Game Gear. How long it's gonna work for, I don't know. I better finish the video quickly before it breaks. Maybe it's only gonna last minutes, I don't know. Oh, it's so nice. It's so nice, if you knew how long I actually spent I mean, the videos are long enough, but if you knew how long I actually <laughs> do this in real life, and then to have a product at the end of the day that's not working is uh, really disappointing. Oh, I'm so happy. Look at that. Look at it. Let's get the skateboard. Let's leave that handbag for a minute. Here we go. Look, look, look. I'm on the skateboard. On a Game Gear. Oh, if I could whiz myself back to 1991, I would have loved this. Still good now. It's still perfect. I'm really intrigued to see how long this is going to last for. I've put quite a lot of pressure on that screen, so maybe it will last a while. Right, okay, so that's that game there. Let's uh, let's try Super Off-Road. Again, look at that, no lines. Excellent. So that is the end of the video. It's so nice to have a Game Gear with a screen that probably looks as good as it did when it came out. So hopefully now it will last a little bit of time before it starts failing again. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Maybe think about subscribing if you haven't already for more trying to fix videos and also how-to videos as well. Really appreciate you watching them. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye now.